Okay, so let's analyze yesterday's game. It says I had an <laughs> estimated rating of 2500, but yeah, I basically just uh, played the uh, unknown trap. Uh, at least I knew it, my opponent didn't. Um, but I wanted to show it to you anyway because it's a really cool trap. Um, so yeah, I started off uh, wanting to go into the Jabava London, so I had he played this, uh, which was supposed into Jabava London. Um, but instead, my opponent went for a, a King's Indian setup. Uh, and there it's best to just uh, develop with uh, the pawn here. And uh, this is best, just basically preventing me from uh, from doing this. And King's Indian players are familiar with this position, although usually it's uh, when C4 is played. Uh, so more Queen's Gambit style. Um, and actually the trap I'm uh, executing here is... Uh, is one you only can uh, execute with your knight here. Uh, so that's why my most King's Indian players don't know it. Um, and yeah, my opponent was uh, 1949 rated when we started the game even a little bit higher. Um, so you can see that even at those uh, those ratings, uh, people just fall for it. Uh, so the move is uh, uh, bishop f4. And this is still all theory. And here I'm pushing this pawn. And the engine gives this a mistake. Um, but yeah, traps are uh, often uh, risky. Um, but in my opinion, uh, people can often go wrong here. And even if they don't, uh, I can show you that uh, it's you actually have a lot to play for. So the best black can do is to move the knight here. We would bring a bishop back here. This pawn would hang, so they would take it. And uh, yeah, this is the reason that uh, the, the initial move was given as a mistake. But we can bring our queen here, basically attacking the bishop. So bishop usually goes back. And we're gonna castle queenside. And you can see that, yeah, we have given up a pawn. Uh, we're threatening discoveries here. Uh, we have two open files to work with. So uh, we definitely have a lot of compensation. So I was fine uh, going into this line uh, in the game. Also, uh, Kings Indian players usually are not familiar with, with this. And uh, yeah, I have played uh, this position uh, multiple times and, uh, and studied it as well. So. Uh, that's probably, even though the uh, engine says it's minus 0.3, um, probably an advantage to me. So, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind going into this. So, uh, that's why I played uh, e5. And mainly why I played e5 is because a lot of people fall for this trap. Uh, my opponent fell for as well uh, in this game. Um, so, what usually happens is that they trade here. Um, and now still they can play knight here, although... Uh, it loses its venom, um, then it would even still be better for uh, for me. Uh, but usually they trade queens and then put a knight there. And you might think, okay, that's not much of a difference. Uh, but the difference is that I can bring my knight here. And uh, this position is still slightly better for white, but not, uh, not too bad uh, for black. Uh, best move is to castle, actually, and to give up this pawn. And that's why it's... Um, yeah, so tricky to play for black because usually they uh, they don't want to do that, don't want to uh, to give up that pawn. Um, and yeah, the other threat here is to basically fork the king and rook. And the hidden threat is to actually checkmate, which happened in the game, and I'll show you. Um, but yeah, this threat um, is basically you can't really stop it, uh, although castling does actually indirectly stop it. Uh, but if you try to defend with the knight, we can just snatch the knight off. So that doesn't work. Um, so what people usually calculate in this position is they take here with the knight, which my opponent did in the game. Uh, and what they calculate is that after this, uh, they can uh, move their king. And then if I take the rook, uh, they can probably win the knight back at some point And they have two pieces for the rook, which would be all right. Uh, that's their logic. Um, but what happened in the game? He took my bishop, I took here, and my opponent actually resigned because he probably saw it coming at this point. Uh, but the point is that after the king moves, I'm not going to take the rook, but I'm just going to checkmate him. Uh, he didn't let me play it, but uh, yeah, it's uh, a really nice trap. Um, I was quite surprised because, uh, let's see, yeah, my opponent took 22 seconds to take the bishop, so he was clearly analyzing this, thinking about what to do. Um, and still ended up uh, blundering checkmate in two. So, yeah. When he was thinking this long, I was like, okay, he's not going to fall for the trap. He's going to castle or something. Uh, interesting moves are uh, this as well. Um, 
this is an important uh, position to study because you might think, okay, you can win a rook like this. Um, I'm not going to go into all of that, but that's actually a mistake, uh, like the engine says. Um, Jack Castling would be best, but I was thinking a lot, so I, I figured he would either play this or castle. Um, or, uh, I don't know, maybe block things off, give up the rook and play from there. I don't know what he was going to do, but... Uh, I, I really didn't think he would fall for the checkmate, but he did. And, uh, yeah, as you can see... Um, it's a 1900, 1950 even, uh, uh, falling for the strap. So uh, uh, goes to show how uh, how tricky this is um, and uh, how even at these ratings you can uh, trap someone win with. So uh, yeah, it, this was supposed to be an analysis, but mainly I'm just explaining a trap, uh, which I already explained in another video, but it's nice to see it uh, being executed in a game. So uh, I hope you like this as well, and I hope you can uh, execute this in your games. So uh, for now, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.